the diagnostic criteria are, are used by clinicians, uh, geriatricians, neurologists, psychiatrists to help ascertain who might have Alzheimer's disease or other dementias or mild cognitive impairment, which is like a pre-Alzheimer's condition. The present guidelines were first formulated in 1984 and have not been revised since then. There has been much research in science since then that has uh, given us new insights to the, what's happening in the brain. So we needed to incorporate the new knowledge in uh, new guidelines. The changes are minor but important. We now recognize that memory loss is not the only thing that can lead to uh, or be the diagnostic uh, criteria for Alzheimer's disease, but it could be other cognitive functions like attention, uh, confusion, uh, spatial orientation, getting lost in the environment, and so forth. We also now recognize that uh, Alzheimer's doesn't always occur alone, and it could be uh, along with other kinds of dementias or other changes in the brain that uh, weren't addressed in the old guidelines. Doctors will continue to uh, treat patients much like they have in the past because there are no new drugs yet. However, they will be more aware of earlier changes and the possibility that other diseases are contributing to the, uh, the problems the patient may be having. One of them being mild cognitive impairment, uh, or MCI, uh, which can occur before dementia and uh, was well known to the research community but was, is now going to be probably more uh, available, or the knowledge is going to be more available to the uh, general community. Uh, these guidelines are going to have a terrific impact or a big impact on research, mainly because it's a paradigm shift of looking much earlier before symptoms occur in Alzheimer's and using biomarkers to identify those people who might be at risk for developing symptoms later. Uh, so the earlier we can uh, identify people like that, then uh, research on treatment can start to treat people in these earlier stages.